Hello there, this is Mr. Olson. Uh, yeah, math, exponents. This is a quiz day video, so there's a quiz on these things. Yep. Pause the video, try simplifying each exponent. Okay, we are back. 3 to the 5th times 3 to the 7th, this is the one where we have the same base, so you add the exponents. 3 to the 12th. Again, think this is 5 threes and 7 threes, which are both 12 threes. 2 to the 5th times 2 to the 4th, this is the one where we multiply the bases and keep the same exponent. That you have five twos and five fours, each five and each two and a four makes an eight. Eight to the fifth. Five to the third times five to the eighth. That's five to the eleventh. Set two to the seventh times two to the x. Because x to the seventh. Two x in parentheses to the seventh. Five to the third times four to the fifth. This one you actually can't simplify. The bases are different, the exponents are different. So cannot simplify. Number six, six to the fourth times three to the fourth, that makes 18 to the fourth. Keep the same exponent, multiply the bases. X to the fifth times X to the seventh, yeah. X to the twelfth. Um, add the bases, X to the minus X to the twelfth. Four to the seventh times six to the third, this one cannot simplify. Cannot simplify. Four to the X times seven to the X, multiply the bases together. 28 to the power of x. 6 to the 7th times 6 to the 8th, that is 6 to the 15th. Very good. That's review from last time. If, you need to, if you're not sure how that goes, why this works, look for the video from April 11th because it goes into more detail on why each of those property works, properties works. Today's objectives, we'll understand the multiplication division properties of exponents and do good on the quiz. And the second objective is we're going to learn some more um, properties of exponents. Class business. Box tops, three green box tops if you have them. Leaving, let me know if you're going to be leaving for the end of class period. Quizzes, um, make sure that you're going to keep any quizzes that you need to do. Uh, I am not really available very much for quizzes after school. Um, this week on Wednesday and Thursday, uh, the 20th and 21st, um, I will be sort of available after school, but I'm doing a study session for the state math contest, and so I won't be able to sit down and work with you on a quiz or explain this is what you did wrong or correct right away. You can take a quiz, you can get turned in, but we'll be discussing things and uh, it could be a bit of a distraction if you're, or for you taking a quiz. So just be aware, yes, I'm available after school, but it's not like the best availability. On the other days, Monday, Tuesday, and Friday, I am not available at all. Uh, quizzes. Uh, homework. Please make sure you get your homework turned in. Um, if you have any homework, please get that to me. State Math Contest is coming up. It is, a, it is on April 25th. We'll have study sessions on the 21st and 20th. If I have enough people that say they want to come to study session early morning on the 20th, then we'll hold that. In fact, I'll, I'll be here anyways, but just I'm hoping there'll be people there as well. Uh, State Math Contest. So 20th and 21st, and then before school on the 20th. Uh, any of those days, uh, come to that because we're going to be going over last year's state math contest and discussing some of the problems for it. Okay, three good things. What's good right now? Me, uh, you know, I had a pretty nice weekend. We worked on building the props and things for the musical, and it's going well. Looking good. Okay, properties of exponents. Let's go over the properties we have so far. So, first off, we have our multiplication stuff. We have like x to the a times x to the b then that equals x to the a plus b, the add those two exponents together. We also have a to the x times b to the x, and that equals a, b in parentheses to the x. They multiply those two together first. It may be multiplied together to make a number, and maybe that they multiply and don't. They have like an a and a seven, so it would be seven a to the x. Um, we also have properties for division. x to the a divided by x to the b, which is x to the a minus b, and then a to the x over b to the x. Uh, and that would be equal to a over b in parentheses to the x. Okay. Try out these ones here using division properties. Pause the video. All right, and we're back. 2 to the 9th over 2 to the 3rd, 2 to the 6th. x to the 10th over x to the 3rd, x to the 7th. This is the ones where you have the same base and you subtract the exponents. 18 to the 5th divided by 3 to the 5th, that's 6 to the 5th. 32 to the 7th over 4 to the 7th, that's uh, h to the 7th. 5 to the 8th over 5 to the 2nd, that is 5 to the 6th. 28 to the x over, 20, over 7 to the x, that's 4 to the x. So we've got two different properties. We've got the ones where you subtract the exponents, uh, like 11, 12, and 15, and the other ones where you divide the bases. 
17, 8 to the 10th over 8 to the 7th, that's 8 to the 3rd. 18, 21 to the 4th over 3 to the 4th, that's 7 to the 4th. 15, 15 to the 3rd over 19, 15 to the 3rd over 5 to the 3rd is 3 to the 3rd. 20, 4 to the 9th over 4 to the 5th, that is 4 to the 4th. 21, that's 4 to the 5th. And 22, we need to subtract the bases, x to the 7th. Okay, try out these ones here. Kind of a mixed review of all the different properties and things. Uh, yeah, I'll go over some of them with you. Probably the, go over the second column with you guys, all right? Pause the video. Okay, we're back. 24 to the x, there were 6 to the x, that is 4 to the x. 5 to the 7th over 7 to the 3rd, we've got different bases, different exponents, so that can't simplify. Cannot simplify. Negative 8 to the 5th times negative 8 to the 4th, that's going to be negative 8 to the 9th. Keep the parentheses there, I'll talk about that one in a second. W to the 12th over W to the 4th, that's W to the 8th. 3 to the 5th times Y to the 5th, that's 3Y in parentheses to the 5th. And x to the 7th times x to the 4th, x to the 11th. Okay, let's look at this one. We're going to look at just part of it, the negative 8 to the 4th. Some people don't bother putting the parentheses around that. Let's look at this, these two things, with or without the parentheses. Negative 8 to the 4th would be negative 8 times negative 8 times negative 8 times negative 8. Negative 8 to the 4th would be negative h times h times 8 times 8. This is sort of an order of operations thing. If we've got this in parentheses, we do that first, then put it to the fourth power, multiply by itself four times. Not in parentheses, we do that multiplication first, x one first, then put in the negative. A negative really comes into order of operations at the same time as multiplication. Think of it as like a negative one times eight. Anyway, if we multiply this eight times eight, that's 64. This eight times that eight, negative eight, 64. 64 times 64 is 4,096. Here, we multiply those all together, and that would be 4096 again, with the negative in front of it. So that ends up giving us two completely opposite answers. One of them positive, one of them negative. It doesn't happen every single time with power with negatives, but I would just say if a problem puts parentheses around negatives, write it that way in your answer, especially if you're not sure. Um, yeah, you should always write it the same way that it's written earlier. Okay, try out these ones here. Do them on your own, pause the video. Actually, to, well, pause it and do these problems, and then we'll, yeah. At this point, F46 ever did the quiz if you were in my class, so you should know how to do the quiz by then. So we did a bit of stuff after the quiz. X to the seventh to the fourth. Pause the video, see if you can figure out what that equals. Okay, we're back. So you should have, you may have figured out this would be X to the seventh multiplied by X to the seventh times X to the seventh times X to the seventh, which makes a total of X to the 28th. Total of 28 X's. Basically, you can multiply the power, the uh, exponents together. If you have an exponent raised to an exponent, it's equal to the same base raised to the exponents multiplied together. Now, that's only if there's no parentheses. If there's no parentheses, we work from left to right on that. If there was parentheses around this, that means you do the 7 to the 4th first, then do x to that power. Which ends up being a different thing entirely, because that would be x to the 2,401st. Try that out on these ones here. Pause the video. Okay, you should have gotten 5 to 21, 6 to the 24, and this one you should be able to do on your own. Okay, 51 and 52. So these ones each have sort of a thing I was doing with them. 2 to the 4th over 2 to the 3rd. We can subtract the bases, giving us 2 to the 1st. Now a lot of people kind of guess by instinct that that's equal to 2. And that's correct, actually. Good guess. Let's just look at if we actually did 2 to the 4th, that would be 16 divided by 2 to the 3rd, which is 8. 16 divided by 8 is 2. Any number to the first power equals that number. x to the first equals x. This one, if we subtract the exponents, keep the same base, we get 3 to the 0. Let's go why it's 3 to the 0. So if we were to divide these, 3 to the 8, that's some big number. I think it's 6,561 divided by 6,561. What does that actually equal? If you divide a number by itself, what do you get? You get 1, which is kind of weird. A lot of people think that this should be a 0, not a 1. 3 to the 0 equals 1. Let's look at this. So if we have 3 to the 0, 3 to the 1, 3 to the 2, and 3 to the 3rd. 3 to the 3rd, that's 3 times 3 times 3. That's 27. 3 to the 2nd, that's 3 times 3, which is 9. 3 to the 1st is just a 3, which is 
3. Notice on the right here, if we divide by 3, 27 divided by 3 is 9, 9 divided by 3 is 3, 3 divided by 3 is 1. So if we follow that pattern dividing, then we get a 1. Notice we put a number at the beginning here. Let's say we multiply this by 1 at the first. Does that change anything? No. If you multiply this by 1, does it change it? No. This by 1, does it change it? No. But that does show that when we multiply those 1s in there, what's left over at the end is just a 1 when we get rid of all the 3s. So if you have 0 3s, it's a 1. Another way to think of it is um, 3 to the... Uh, Sorry, I just got an ear, that was interesting. Um, yeah, ends up being just a 1. Another way to think of it is that 0 means kind of neutral, that nothing happens. If we have an exponent, so multiplying, but then nothing happens, when is it nothing happens with multiplying? With the 1. So there's a couple of ways to think of that. You can think of it as a division thing here. You can think of it as any exponent is 1 times by that number, 1 times 3, 3 times, 1 times 2, twice, 1 times 3, once, 1 times 3, twice, um, which then results that 3 to the 0 is just a 1, and that's all. Either way, that's our property, x to the 0 equals 1. Any number to the 0th power equals 1, except occasionally 3. Okay, try these ones out here, pause the video. And we are back. 8 to the 1, 8. 5 to the 0, 1. x to the 0, 1. 4 to the 1, 4. 7 to the 0, 1. y to the 1, y. Okay, so that is it for the notes today. Hope you enjoyed. Have a good one. Bye.